When Jean Kafour was a boy, Ghana was controlled by the British, who took over in 1902. He saw his nation become the first African colony to gain independence, led by Dr. Kwame Nkrumah in 1957. Blessed with family wealth and an Oxford education, young John Kufour felt a calling. John Ajekum Kufour was born on December 8, 1938 in Kumasi, Ghana, the country's second largest city and the Ashanti capital. He was born the seventh of ten children to Nana Kweju Ajekum, head of the Oyoko royal family and Nana Madapa, a queen mother. The family had royal Ashanti lineage. Kufo was raised by his mother. At school, Kufo was good at both academics and sports. He liked school and so after graduation went on to attend and graduate from Prempe College in Kumasi in 1959. At his graduation, he was awarded five of the six awards given to the best students. He went on to study law at Lincoln's Inn in London, England. He passed his bar exam in 1961 and went on to Exeter College at Oxford University to pursue legal studies. After only one year of studying law, however, Kufo realized that his passion lay not in the law but in politics. He switched degrees and started studying philosophy, politics and economics. He graduated two years later. While he was studying at Oxford, Kufo met and fell in love with a woman named Theresa Mensa, who was also from Ghana and had gone to England to study nursing. The two married in 1962 and had five children together. In 1965, Kufo's mother convinced him to bring his family, at the time his wife and two young children, back to Ghana. He agreed and took up law there until 1969 as a way to make a living. He became the chief legal officer and the city manager of Kumasi from 1967 to 1969. Both of these posts allowed Kufo a view of politics from the inside that he had never had before, and they inspired him on his future path. He left the law in 1969 to take up his first ministerial appointment in the Progress Party government as a deputy foreign minister under Victor Owusu, one of the men who used to visit his home when he was just a boy. In 1972, the government was overthrown by the military and many officials were thrown into jail, including Kufu. After his release, he took up a career in business. He became chairman of the board of the Ashanti Brick and Construction Company. Kufo spent a long time in business before he returned to politics. It was not until 1992 that he ran for the office of chairman for the new patriotic party, which had just been formed. He was not elected to the post until 1996, but was then re-elected in 1998. He faced a lot of competition each time he ran, but refused to give up and eventually succeeded in being elected. He next turned his sights towards becoming Ghana's president. Kufo was indeed elected president in the year 2000, defeating longtime president Jerry John Rawlings. It was considered by many to be a turning point in Ghana's future. In 1957, Ghana was the first country in sub-Saharan Africa to claim independence from colonists. The country was then basically handed from one man to another through a system of personal and political loyalties and without the benefit of democratic elections. There are two distinct groups in Ghana, the Nkrumah, who are anti-imperialistic, pan-Africa, socialist and believe in government involvement in the economy, and the Dankwa Buzia, who believe in democracy, the sovereignty of the individual, private enterprise, and free markets. Kufu belonged to the latter. After such an extended period of rule by one person, many were nervous about how the turnover of power would go, but the change went smoothly. Kufu managed to win the election with the platform of zero tolerance for corruption. The country had been rife with it before 
and so the idea was appealing to many. The country was also doing poorly economically, mostly because of such corruption and people were ready for a change. Kufo was nicknamed the gentle giant because he was tall at 6 feet 3 inches and quiet and yet he seemed to instill confidence in those he was to lead. In 2001, Kufo made his first trip to the United States as president of Ghana. He went there to take part in the United Nations General Assembly special session on HIV AIDS. He attended a luncheon set up to establish links between Ghana and black American business leaders with the goal of forging links that would help his country in the future. Although he was called a gentle giant, Kufo meant business. In 2002, he set up a Truth and Reconciliation Committee to examine abuse of power occurring under the five governments that had ruled Ghana since 1966. Some felt these measures were undertaken in order to discredit anyone opposing Kufo's government, but whatever the opposition Kufo faced, he was re-elected in 2004. This time, his campaign message was, so far so good showing that there had been progress in Ghana in his first term. More than 80% of the population turned out to vote in the 2004 elections. It was the largest turnout in West African history. After Kufo won his second term in office, the PR Newswire said, Domestic and international election observers agreed that the contest was free, fair and transparent. Ghana many observers noted is one of the few countries in Africa to have held four consecutive multi-party elections since 1992. By August of 2005, Kufo had visited over 63 countries as president of Ghana and Kufo had great support from the international community. He helped Liberia achieve peace was the first ruler to submit his country to review by the new Partnership for Africa's Development and was a spokesperson for the six leaders from Africa who attended the G8 summit in 2004. He has been seen as one of a handful of leaders of an African renaissance, helping to bring stability and success to Africa. Kofo has been called a boring leader by some in his own country, but that is something that does not upset the ruler. He has said that if boredom has brought with it the peace and stability his country needs, then he thinks there should be more boredom in the world. African Business said of Kufo, True, he does not go for fiery clenched fist speeches that seem to characterize some of Africa's more charismatic leaders, but he has unmistakable gravitas, a disarming sense of humor and most important, people listen when he speaks and then go home and think about what they have heard. He treats ordinary people as sane, reasonable human beings who will respond to sane, reasonable propositions rather than as a mass who can be manipulated through demagoguery. Ghana, however, was not out of trouble completely. In 2004, the country had a poverty level of 40% and it was Kufo's goal to reduce the number significantly. In 2005, Kufo worked to update the country's railway system, establishing the Ghana Railway Development Authority. In 2006, he declared a year of action in Ghana. He met with his investment advisory council and declared, according to African business, that talking was passed and that this will be the year of implementation, implementation and implementation. Kufo's goal was to turn Ghana into a middle-income country by the year 2015. Although the rate of growth has been about 5.8% in recent years, that rate was not high enough to fulfill Kufo's goal, and much more was needed. With this goal in mind and the realization of how difficult it will be, Kufo looked internationally for aid. In 2006, he appealed to South Korea for support in attracting private investments. He also met with US President George W. Bush to discuss receiving aid from the Millennium Challenge account. The world was watching Kufo at the beginning of 2007 and much was expected of the determined ruler. 
He handed over power to Professor J. Evans Atamills, who took over power from J. A. Kofor in the year 2009. Thank you for sticking with us to the end. If you are new here, kindly consider subscribing for more content like this. See you in our next episode. Leave a comment below to tell us the next profile you want to see on the profiler.